Hi, welcome to the first episode of The Chat Room. Today, I'm gonna to be interviewing DJ Sandra D. We're gonna learn where she got her name from. We're gonna learn how she's done it in the business, how she started, where she's gone, where she plans to go to. We're gonna learn more about the Jonas Brothers, the CMAs, and all about Disney, so stay tuned. Can you tell us, um, you know, why did you choose the degree that you did? What is it? Um, and what made you decide to go after that degree? And then we'll get into what you're actually doing right now with that degree. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So I basically, I went to, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I knew I wanted to be in entertainment and I, was kind of confused. I was like, I don't know. I just know that I want to be in entertainment. I loved meeting celebrities. I loved going to the mall, getting autographs and pictures. I knew that was something I loved. I don't know why, but that was something that I knew that I wanted to do. Um, so as crazy and strange as it sounds, and I'm sure it's not true to a lot of folks out there, but I love Backstreet Boys. They're my favorite band of all time. And I said, I want to work for the Backstreet Boys, right? Easy, That's simple. Cool. Not, not so easy and not so simple as I thought, but uh, in my head, because I was this super mega fan, I thought maybe it would be something that I could achieve someday. So I went to college. I went on to that and went to a three-year school. I went to Nassau Community College uh, for three years. I didn't know what I want to do. I know most of your core classes are just your basic science and math. And I said, okay, well, let me go there to of get the ball rolling and then kind of figure out like where I want to do maybe perhaps with a career counseling office which was absolutely wonderful they were fantastic and it was there that I told the career counselor what I wanted to do and she's like okay not sure if that will happen but uh let's see what we can do so I got in touch with <laughs> Jive Records which they happened to be on that label with Britney Spears Inc. at the time mm -hmm. and uh got a letter saying uh unfortunately it was declined for the internship um, but then about, I would say maybe a couple months after that was, uh, my career counselor found, um, a flyer and she's like, you know, I think, I think you might like this. And I was like, what is it? And this was literally right before I was graduating, getting my associates mm -hmm. and moving on to another school. Uh, and she, it said, do you like NSYNC? Do you like the Backstreet Boys? Do you like Aaron Carter and Christina Aguilera? And I was like, oh, yes. what is this? <laughs> Funny story, I still have that flyer in my uh, files because I awesome. remember, like, remember it. Uh, and it was actually for Radio Disney. So I immediately called them and was like, please take me. And then I said, my situation is I'm in between schools right now, so I'm, I can't get credit for it because a lot of internships require that you get credit for it. So they were kind of just desperate at the time to have anybody. And they're like, it's okay. Just, cut, just show up to the offices on whatever day. And it was then that I kind of just... It just kind of happened. So I was in between schools. I then went to Hofstra, mm -hmm. and it was a very large school. And I lo a lot of people will understand this um, from like a student perspective that there are some students who love these really super big classrooms where really big but yeah. me I'm like a one-on-one -on -one, like I need smaller classrooms where I'm able to actually ask questions to teachers mm -hmm. so I transferred because one of the schools that I um I actually was looking at was Adelphi so because they had my paperwork uh it was an easy transfer so I was at Hofstra for maybe about a semester and then made a transfer to Adelphi and it was there that I finished my bachelor's in business management crazy enough everyone thinks it's communications but it wasn't and minored in marketing so i started as an intern at radio Dict. i was the shy quiet intern and uh very very shy and uh, was not about a public speaker or anything and i was amazed at the people that i worked with able to get on a microphone and do all these amazing things with kids and families and i was like this is so cool and i just loved it the atmosphere like who wouldn't want to work for Disney? It is the most magical place to work in the parks or not on earth, literally. It was my happy place. So uh, it was there that I kind of developed myself yeah. as a person and I guess in my kind of figuring out what I wanted to do. So the way I stayed around was I, I, I brought my promotions manager's cookies after my internship was over. And I kind of was like, I really like working here and I do it for free and I don't care. Like, I just really want to work here. So they sent me on a couple of events and uh, they said, okay, we're going to send you out and let, let's see what happens. Like, let, you know, maybe, maybe we'll do something with you. Mm -hmm. So it was then at a 7-Eleven on Long Island in Massapequa. 
uh, that my friend Jenny Jim at the time, we had all these fun names. I go by DJ Sandra Day, she, <laughs> me Jim, and uh, she got me on the microphone and I was scared and awful and terrible and tried to do a hula hoop game with a bunch of kids. Mm. And it was then that DJ Sandra D was born. And uh, I signed some autographs because some kids were like, I love you. Like, I want your autograph. And I was like, okay. And it was so fun. And I was like, wow, this was really cool. But at the same time, I felt like I was going to throw up in my stomach. And my friend Jenny Jem at the time, she's like, that's normal. She's like, like, I think you have potential. I think you should go home and practice with your sisters. So over like the next month or so, I started to really kind of practice with my sisters or even if it was by myself in my living room with hula hoops and pretending to do a hula hoop game. And with the help of my boss, because uh, Jen went back to my boss, Jen, so they're both named Jen, uh, and said, you know, I think Sandra might be interested in this and might have some kind of potential. So it was then and there that I kind of, I kind of fell into Radio Dizzy and, and they wound up hiring me as a host. And uh, I was for 12 years. <laughs> Dang, that's a long time. I'm just so surprised because you said you were so shy. And then, like, I remember you being DJ Sandra D, like, being that outgoing host. So I would have never imagined you being a shy person, like a girl. Terrified. <laughs> Terrified. It wasn't until I was in college in a public speaking class that really kind of, like, I want to say, like, cracked my shell a little bit. It was, I became... A Disney fan and now a fanatic because I had to watch the movies. I had to go home and make questions. I sat down and wrote questions about TV shows, about High School Musical, about the Jonas Brothers and Miley. Like I, I literally immersed myself into this world that I just fell in love with. For all the things you had to learn that helped me, and that that was another thing. I learned so much of just Disney, my Disney isms, which to this day I will still. I you still, still like the practice point, them. The, the point Gosh, like I do it all the time. I do it at my venue and I've had people come up to me and be like, you used to work for Disney <laughs> or you work for Disney, don't you? And I'm like, how did you know that? And they go, and I was like, wow. So like things, and I used to yell at people. I was like, I'm going to duct tape your fingers together because people would always go like this. And I'm like, no, that looks so awful. Yeah. You're supposed to do this. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, with, with the help of my friend who works in Disney to this day, who actually interned at Radio Disney, so he, he finished his four-year degree at St. John's and then went back down because he loved the college program. Yeah. So he works in Magic Kingdom. That's his office. Oh, uh, he, wow. with, his, with his help, he taught me a lot of the, they call it the Disney way and the Disney mm -hmm. look. And they actually have a book, too. They passed it up here in New York. Like, it filtered to all the Radio Disneys, but I feel like... I studied it so much. Like I read books on Walt Disney and all the stuff, like all the importance of why he wanted everything perfect to create this magical image for the company. You're representing Disney, you're representing kids and happiness and being safe and yeah. not falling on, th you know, it's a very fine subject. So I, f I feel like I'm grateful because of that. I look at details and say, shouldn't we put something over that? Like someone's going to fall. Mm -hmm. Someone's going to fall for that. And people are like, wow, I didn't think about that. But it, that's, that's why like it helped me so much to be there because I feel like I learned fine details. So, yeah. and when you have a passion and you love it so much, I think it makes it that much easier to really work and it makes it fun and it makes you drive to get up and go, oh, instead of going, oh, I have to work today. You're like, yes, I'm so excited to put my name tag on and to be like glittery and sparkly and just hang out with a bunch of kids and like dance with them and take pictures and be silly and be a kid. You know, who wouldn't want that job? So for me, I was kind of living a dream. Looking back on it, it was like a dream that I got to live, basically. That's great. <laughs> it's funny because like some other people might look at that and be like, I don't want to be out in the, you know, sunshine with kids dealing with glitter and fun and dancing. So it's like your dream is like somebody else's nightmare. So it's really cool that you found something that you are excited about, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And what better way than to start with the biggest company yeah. ever, you know, like to this day when I apply for a job, they see the Walt Disney company on there and they're like, oh, you're hired. Got rid of, they got rid of all their stations. They don't have they a... They got rid of a, yeah. But he started around with originally with um, like 40, I want to say 
seven stations around the country. And then slowly over the years, they very, they kind of dwindled them down a little bit. And then once we started working a lot with Disney Channel um, towards the end of our run, um, they figured it would be better to go in like a digital route. And um, it was a surprise for everybody. Uh, my bosses were caught off guard. Nobody knew. It was a simple phone call made by the um, president of Radio Disney who was like, we're going digital. Unfortunately, we don't need anybody anymore. And it was crushing, just so crushing to a lot of people. We were family. I, I tell everybody, Disney wasn't the typical Disney. It, we were definitely a family here in New York, you know, and it still holds true. We're still family. I, st I still work alongside some people. Just keep the keep the radio thing going as, yeah. as a side hustle in their life on, on top of their full-time jobs. And um, yeah, I think one out of all them that I work with that has been with me since my Radio Disney days. I saw that you went to the uh, Country Music Awards in Dallas. I did. So uh, after my Radio Disney days, I, I, uh, I then was like, oh no, what do I do? And I was like, I literally went into like a depression. I was, I was so depressed and I never in my life would I have considered a depression. But now that I look back, I'm like, I was depressed. I was crying every day. I like never wore my contacts. I was like, uh, what am I going to do? Like, you know, fear of the unknown. And here I am with a degree trying to kind of be on the air because that's kind of what I did on Radio Disney was hosting. And I really loved it. I did a PSA show. Um, which is basically interviewing organizations. Uh, it was a kids' concern show, so I kind of fell in love with that along the way. Yeah. So I then moved on to Cumulus, and I was there for about four and a half years. And uh, there was a whole bunch of stations there. There was a Radio One Hundred Three Nine, which is kind of like urban music. Uh, there was a country station, um, Nash, which is now New York's country, uh, ninety four seven, and um, a news station seventy. WBC, uh, which is now owned by another company now, and on 95.5 PLJ. And unfortunately, that company also uh, kind of disbanded, and I fell under the PLJ realm of it. And uh, after four and a half years, they were like, we need to disband everybody. And uh, again, it was just like, wow, this is, uh, I'm like nil for nil here. Like, what am I going to do? Man. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. I almost felt like I had like something following me, but I, I loved it there because it was way different than Radio Disney, different. whereas it was more like laid back. I went to Entercom, um, okay. which basically they, uh, they bought the station. So that kind of worked out for me. And obviously make sure you don't break, break, not breaking any ties with anybody is my point is, you know, don't break your ties because you never know go next so i started with undercom i've been there about a year this may um question mark obviously everything's pending with covid because i fall in the promotions department and with promotions like the boots to ground people who like see people um so we have yet to find out what's happening and what's going on but that's okay again fall under the fear of the unknown but it's okay uh, because you just kind of sit back patiently and wait but I, you have to have a lot of side hustles on radio, and one of them is working at a venue. I've been there longer than I was at Radio Disney. So um, I met some guy that, that was there as I was directing people where to go, and he's like, what do you do? And it was just so random, and I was like, well, I, I'm in radio. And he's like, yeah, but what do you do? Like, what do you, what do you want to do? What's your goal? And I was like, um, I think I'm here. And he's like, you know, my son's a teacher. And I was like, wait, are you serious? Or are you just joking with me right now? And he's like, no, I'm serious. He goes, come on, come here, come here, Joe. So I met Joe, who happened to be the head of the radio department at the SUNY College of Westbury. Oh, so wow. in December of uh, that year that Radio Disney was going bye-bye, uh, he's like, I want to help you. Like, call me. Like, I literally want to help you. I, I, I feel your passion and I want to help you. So I met up with him and uh, long story short, he taught me how to use a board because I had no idea how to use a board and basically taught me everything I know. And it was there that I started my on air career kind of uh, as a community volunteer. So I don't get paid for doing it, but it is awesome and a passion and I do a country pop show. So through there, I get to do a lot of amazing things. Uh, and it's a lot of hard work because, and I didn't know how hard, 
Carter was actually going to be because I promote things myself. I look up the managers and PR people and it's constant networking, which I was to begin with working with the radio stations, but now it was like really, now is really developing DJ Sangri. Now it's really great coming full force, you know, what talking to every single person. Yeah. And uh, it was there that I got to attend and applied for the Academy of Country Music Awards. So I got to go to uh, Texas in 2015, which was awesome. I uh, love Texas. I, I wish I was there. there. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got to go to the ACM Awards again in Vegas, uh, which was really cool too. I've never been to Vegas and I was like, okay, this is cool. I'm not really a Vegas realized but it's it was super cool I think just because I enjoyed the country aspect and that the country artists were everywhere so like I could walk into MGM and they were like rolling die like I think that was cool you know yeah. so that was that was awesome but it, it's been amazing to to see that when you put your mind to it and you're like I want to do this I want to cover this and I would go to my station manager and be like I want to cover this and be like okay let's let's fill out the application and see what happens you know, that's basically what it, what, what I would do there. And, um, it's been pretty awesome. Like, I, I feel like I've achieved so many things. And again, I don't get paid to do that, but just knowing that that's my passion and that hopefully someday I'll be able to do that and actually like get a paycheck doing that mm -hmm. is like, wow, like this could actually be a thing. Um, I got to interview Gloria Gaynor, the queen, like, I was like on the phone and I was like, this is crazy that I'm talking to Gloria. Yeah. Like <laughs> I will survive. Like she, and she's amazing. She's an amazing person. And it was just, it's cool. Like I pinch myself every time. Um, that's a great part of it is that, that I can, I can make a change somehow. Like, and I feel like Dick Clark has always been like, for me, someone I look up to, you know, Ryan Seacrest is awesome. I've met him, been fortunate enough to a couple of times uh, through my Radio Disney realm, but uh, Dick Clark for me, I was like, man, this guy had American Bandstand, like he had a vision and made a change and discovered like Madonna and New Kids on the Block, and I was like, this is awesome, and it's cool, and it's great to see so many male people dominating that side of the industry, but what about the females, yeah. you know, I've always been like, listen, I love you, Ryan Seacrest. And I literally told him this one day when I met him, I was like, can I have one of your jobs? Because I would love one of your jobs. And like, I jokingly said it, but I was like, no, really, I love one of your jobs. You know, because I feel like, I, I, you know, it's nice to see a female on TV kind of step up to the plate and take on the, take on the charge right there. I've always been like passionate about that. There's a lot of women in radio groups that I'm a part of where we're just kind of like go-getters and we like support each other. And it's cool. It's cool to have that. It's like a camaraderie. Like we can do it, you know, yeah. you know, and I literally tell interns like, this is great. I love that. I see your passion for radio, but try other than radio. And there's so many jobs that you can do, you know, that it's endless and you just <laughs> never know, you know, cause radio is changing. You know, the industry is changing a lot, um, yeah. especially after COVID. Uh, there were many, many layoffs, unfortunately, throughout the country. And that's a little concerning. But, um, you know, we're hoping that hopefully it'll get better in the future. Yeah. That's kind of what I see in the future for radio. But, I mean, we'll see what happens. But, I, I like I said, I try to educate the younger mm -hmm. kids who are in, you, you know, our interns. And I'm like, listen, you're doing a great job. I see her. And, like, but, you know, think of other things you could do in the entertainment field. Not, yeah. to, not to shy them away from radio, but just to kind of opening the door, right? And letting them know that there is more out there. What a great resource exactly. to have there. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I mean, it's good. Everyone's just like, wow, you're like, you've been like everywhere, you know, everybody. And I was like, but that's also a good thing. You know, wherever you go, especially in entertainment, it's good to know people. It's good to introduce yourself and be that person. Don't be afraid. Hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. Here's, you know, you have to be that go-getter because you never know that person that you're shaking their hand or elbowing because we're going to do, we do it the COVID way now. Yeah. I don't know if they'll be that person who can be like, I really liked her, you know, like I'm, I want her on my team, you know, you just never know. So it all comes down to that too. It's not just about like, okay, great. I just met this person who can connect me with this person, but you just never know. You yeah. know, you may change your mind. I, I mean, I've even thought about like working on the label side of things and trying to like, you know, cause I feel like 
with radio because it's been so like fearful and not knowing what's going to happen. I'm like, well, what else can I do? You know, and what I do is represent all these artists and do interviews with them. And yeah, that's great and all, but like to do it on a label end to actually represent them would be kind of cool. So I'm even myself thinking of other avenues that I can go to using the knowledge that I have. Well, and the nice thing is you have built up this like plethora of things that you are able to do. You know, you're basically, you know, a Jackie of all trades in the radio industry. So you can kind of go anywhere with it, which is great to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. It's literally, you can do whatever you want when you put your mind to it. And that, that's a, that's for any job, I think is my biggest thing to tell anybody when you to a job, don't tell them, I just want to learn this one thing. You said your answer should be, I want to be a sponge. I will learn everything. That should be your answer. Because if you say, I just want to learn this, then that, that person, employer is going to be like, wait a second, they don't want to learn anything else. Oh, I don't know if I want to hire them. Yeah. You know, you want to, you, it's good to learn so many things. Mm-hmm. The more things you learn, think about how, how many bullets you're going to have on that resume. It's going to be a pretty bomb resume. So <laughs> I, th- I think that's why I tell people, I go, go talk to the production push kids, go talk to the production person. Like, this is blah, blah, blah. He just started here. You know, if someone like me can just introduce them to somebody else, then, you know, go talk to them, go find out what their job is, go find out how much they ache, like go to, go have a conversation yeah. with them, you know, things well, like that are important. You know, you know? in like eyes wide open. Cause I think that's something that's kind of changed from when I was in college was there wasn't necessarily as much of all this available. And now there's so many like resources online through people, you know, and I think people are getting a little more like, I should know more before I decide, you know, what I want to do with my life. So I think it's prompting people to actually ask those questions and it's good to have mm-hmm. people like you there also kind of pushing them being like, just do it. Just talk to them. <laughs> exactly. It's, 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 and it's so vital. I mean, I've even been saying my sister works in a school uh, part time as like a push and pull out teacher for um, for kids who mm-hmm. kind of need a little bit more of the help. Um, but I've always been like, you know, they should really start young. Like you should be starting in high school as far as figuring out what you want to do with your life. Yeah. No, it's crazy, you know. But I. F- I feel like children shouldn't be waiting until college. I think when you get to college, you should already have a plan A and a plan B and a plan C. You should always have plan A, plan B, plan C. It shouldn't be just one plan. You know, that's like saying, I want that toy for Christmas. But if that toy is sold out, we need something else. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that thing or something similar to that toy. I think that's what we need. We need more career counselors in high schools. You know, college, great. Yes. Okay. But high school, I wish, I wish someone would have guided me more in high school, not just my guidance counselor. You know, your guidance yeah. counselor is there to be like, oh, you're, you're not doing so well in this class. You might want to seek extra help. And that's fine and all. I get it. But you should also be trying to figure out who you are as a person. Yeah. Well, I love getting to know people. I love hearing people's stories. And I know that like, that's the kind of videos that I search for is like, where can I learn about like, let's say I wanted to go into radio or something like if mm-hmm. I had high school and videos like this had been out, like that would have been cool to be like, Oh, this was her experience. Like, how can I, you know, do that path too? Kind of thing. Exactly. Absolutely. I love that. That's important. It's important to like, that's why I try and educate any mm-hmm. intern or younger people who are rolling through our doors, you know, not, not to deter them from my field, but just to more help them and guide them. Cause it's, it's hard when you're in college or school or just graduated, like, Ooh, what do I do? You know, it, it becomes difficult at times, you know, so I feel like I've always wanted to step into kind of educate the younger generation as like, you know, to be that open for them and be like, ask me anything, you know? So that's always been my MO when I've been working as well. I'm like, ask me, I will teach you. <laughs> Let me tell you everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how did you actually get your name? I know um, you said it's DJ Sandra D. Um, uh-huh. Did you come up with that? Did somebody name you that? Well, funny that you asked that because I love the movie Grease. That is literally my favorite movie ever. And it's crazy. After a while, actually, in Disney, we we weren't allowed to have 
fun names. I don't know why we had to go by our first name, but I was the only D company that was allowed to go by Sandra D because D could have passed for my middle name. Wasn't my middle name. I don't even have a middle name, but <laughs> my bosses let it slide and argued for me and said, no, her name is D. Like she needs to have that on her name tag. So I was the only one in the company with DJ Sandra D. Whereas everybody else's fun names, like one of my friends was Wild Matt, you know, or yeah. uh, Jenny Jem, like all those, we had the fun names for a while, but then they disappeared over time because they didn't want, they didn't allow that. And I get it. I get it. Yeah. Um, but one of my, one of my mentors, I guess I could call him my mentor, uh, who I looked up to, Bugsy, he had a fun name too, had nothing to do with Disney. I still fight him on that to this day. <laughs> Um, I'm always like, you had Bugs Bunny name. And he was also one of the few in the company who was allowed to show his tattoo of Bugs Bunny on his leg. Uh, normally, you're not allowed to show tattoos at all. You have to cover them up. Hmm. But he was the only one to get away with it, of course, uh, for a while when he moved down to Florida and stuff like that. But he, he, pretty, much, he pretty much dubbed me that name. He's like, DJ Sandra D. I, 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 that's your favorite movie. Sandra D. Hello. He's like, it just fits. Yeah. And I was like, huh. Yeah. So it just kind of, it just kind of stuck. So let's get into some of the fun stuff. Um, who has been your favorite celebrity that you've interviewed so far? I know you mentioned Gloria Gaynor, but you know. this is so hard. I probably Adam Hood. He's a awesome singer songwriter who has who's become a friend, and um, he's from Alabama, people like Alabama. And I actually flew down to Florida just to interview him. Uh, there's just something about interviewing a singer songwriter for me who's written was in such powerful lyrics for people like Little Big Town and Miranda that I was just like, oh, I was like in awe. It was just awesome. Uh, and, and also Brent Cobb, who they actually are roommates in Nashville. And of course, Jonas Brothers. I can't, I can't just credit those people because I got to interview them live on stage where I don't have video footage of uh, pre-cell phones. But uh, when we back when we had like digital cameras and physical cameras, but you know, with the Jonas Brothers and you know, at getting fans to ask them questions, that was that was a pinch me moment for sure. You know, like why not? Like it was cool. I I wish I had video footage of that. You know, I just have pictures. But uh, you know, that to see them go on and have families and be these mega stars that they are, it's just so cool. You know, it gives me like chills. You know. And it's nice, too, because their dad will, you know, when I comment on something on, on his page, he'll be like, well, we still think about you. We, we love you. You know, it's nice. It's, it's kind of nice because it's like, wow, like, you know, to think that they were babies and they started with us. It's just yeah. incredible. It's just incredible. I just, I love them. I'm like, I'm a Joe Bro fan for life. That's, that's me. I, big sister. That's what they called me for a while, too. <laughs> the curly hair, just like Nick. <laughs> What's what's Frankie up to? I've seen all the other. They're back on tour. What's what's Frankie doing? <laughs> I know. I don't know. And it's funny. He's like the one Jonas I wish I could run into one of these days. It's okay. Like, I love that kid to death. And now he's like, what, 22, I think. I, um, it just makes me feel old. <laughs> it makes me feel old. But I, I hear he's okay. I hear he's doing his thing. And that's good. You know, whether he's in school or doing whatnot. Yeah. I'm I'm a pro Frankie Jonas right there. He's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of, you know, you've been in the industry quite a while. What are some obvious changes that you've seen in radio from, you know, when you started to now? Because like you've said, things have changed. Things are going digital. There's different ways, different platforms. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so many different options now. So what are kind of the biggest things that you've had to maybe adjust to or learn or are excited about? Well, definitely podcasting. I feel like that's been like the biggest change in radio is podcasting. That's like a huge thing. Uh, I think that's kind of changing the world in the real world, so to speak, um, which is good. You know, it's a good thing. It gives a lot of people like yourself who are doing these interviews to maybe consider something like a podcast. If they didn't want to, if they were looking and didn't want to do something visually, they could do something audio. Um, so that's been something that I myself have been thinking about doing is kind of taking what I do to a podcasting level because I know that's a big thing and a big platform right now. So that's something that I, I, I'll 
like I said, quarantine's doing good for me because I'm working on stuff that I'm like, wow, I could, I should totally, if I had done that, I should be doing that. Yeah. Anybody in the entertainment field, this is going to be your lifeline, and it sucks, at, you know, like to a point. Yeah because you have to really constantly be pushing things and constantly be on it and be putting out the content, you know? So it's kind of like you're married to your phone. Yeah. To, to a, you know, a sense, but again, that's going to help you develop as a person and say, Hey, maybe I could be a social media person for Nike yeah. or something. You know, it's kind of, again, another Avenue that I would have never thought. So I basically, I run my own account, which people, don't know because they're like wait ha are you posting all that stuff and I was like yeah I don't have anybody that does it for you I'm like no um so it's a lot of work with some respect with creating images and pushing interviews and all that stuff um but also I do run uh run with uh, social media with the uh Old Westbury web radio where I do my radio show too so I kind of like anytime my GM needs anything he's like hey can you do me a favor and push this out got it Okay, boss, no problem. Boom, boom, boom. You know, because I'm able to do it that quickly. Yeah. Um, but things like that, you know, I think it's just evolving and changing. You know, most people are kind of not listening in their cars to regular radio anymore. I see them listening more to Sirius or, um, you know, things that they have to subscribe to. I think that's been kind of the trend. Not to say radio, regular radio is dying, but it's just becoming less popular. So I foresee like a lot of these platforms like Syria and all that stuff becoming like the new norm, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And would you say like, did you, I'm assuming you taught yourself how to kind of make all those graphics and edits and stuff. Do you have any suggestions for people out there who are trying to, you know, teach themselves from home? Like, did you watch any videos or was it, were you able to like Google stuff online? Oh how yes. You YouTube is amazing. Guys, let me tell you, not just because this interview is going to be on YouTube yeah. and you should hit subscribe, but because there, when I can't figure something out, even if it's how to turn on the TV or use remote control, all I got to do is go on YouTube. It is a blessing. Um, so I've been learning all these tips and tricks whenever they update Instagram and they say, oh, you can do this now on Instagram. And I'm like, I didn't even know how to do that. So there are people that you can follow on YouTube, just something as simple as looking it up and saying, and, and just practicing it, just looking at the videos over. In fact, I have to practice still and, and look at videos over and, over and be like, wow, I can do that on Instagram, on an Insta story. That's pretty cool. How would you say, how do you work through barriers or past barriers? Cause you know, like you've said, you, you've worked for a company and then they've closed down and then you worked for another company and then they closed down. How do you keep yourself going through all that? Ooh. I want to say faith, trust, and pixie dust, the Disney answer, but it's not really that because yeah. not everything's a Disney world out there. Yeah. It's, it's just kind of like being hopeful. Again, don't break any ties with anybody. Like if you're in college or high school right now and you're watching this, make a business card. There's a brilliant site called Vistaprint where you can literally make business cards and order a thousand of them for $20. You know, there's so many sites like that where are able to connect with people. And I think now that we have things like LinkedIn, which are so vital, go on LinkedIn, front everybody and anybody you can who you think you might be connected to. If you find that you have that may you may have an interest in something, they might be able to hook you up with it. They may even have a job for you. You just don't yeah. know. You know, so it's more of kind of being having the faith, keeping the faith, keeping hope, and just hoping that you know, the more you work and the harder you work and knowing that you're putting in all this hard work, but knowing that you have this goal in the end, you know, and give up. That's, that's always been my, my life motto. And it stinks because you'll have the days where you will cry and you'll be like, oh, this is why, why is it not going my way? Why is it every place down? You know, it's just, you have to just keep the faith, but know at the same time that you, there are so many avenues and routes that you can go down that you never thought of. You're, wow, I could totally do that. And it'll come to you someday. You'll be like, maybe, may, or you can have multiple hustles like I do. You can work at a venue, interview artists, you could do this and this and this. And that gives you the freedom to figure out where you want to go in your next career path. You know, that's also a, a good, good thing to have too. Multiple hustles. Mm -hmm. Multiple hustles. That's awesome. <laughs> um, 
one last question. Um, and also, do you want to, you said you have all these social medias. Can you please plug them? What are, I where do. Find you? you can follow me at DJ Sandra D everything. Super easy. Twitter, <laughs> Instagram, Facebook. Um, I also have uh, some pals down in Orlando, Florida that I do do some stuff with. And they, they, they were so kind to give me a Sweet Beats radio page. Awesome. And uh, I have my website, which I'm currently trying to fix because it's a little bit weird. It's not pointing to the right djsandrady.com, but djsandrady.com is the way to find me uh, and will be. Uh, but yeah, you can always literally friend me. You can ask me questions about radio. If there's something else you want to know about the industry, I'm totally an open book. Please fill up my box and we'll be friends. <laughs> and when can they listen to your show? When is your show on? My show is on every Friday from 11 to 1, and we're hoping, we're hoping we get back into the studio soon later. Um, and I usually post those on a, a site called Spreaker. I always post everything to my Facebook page when I'm done with it. Uh, a lot of the interviews I've been doing since in quarantine and our studios have been down, I've been doing interviews on Instagram because I said, what can I do? I can't be in a studio. So every Saturday, I do a Sweet Beats Saturday, which is cool until, you know, Maybe yeah. quarantine's over until things go back to some sort of what the new normal is. But I do interview two artists on Instagram for an hour on Saturdays from six to seven. And you can ask questions artists uh, down below, which is awesome and super fun. And I love it. And it's, it's kind of become my new norm since I can't be in a studio right now. But um, like I said, we're hoping to get back in and uh, to listen to my show is OWWRNY.org. And uh, yeah, it's super fun there. So hopefully we'll be in there sooner than later, bringing everybody some music, entertainment news, interviews, up, all that fun stuff. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> and to close out, I just want to know, you know, where are you hoping to go from here? Where, what does the future hold? Oh, story of my life. I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. know. It's a standard question. It, it's such a deep question. I feel it's, I, I don't know because it's like, I, I have so many things I'm interested in. I do want to be on the air, but at the same time, I know that I have so many other strengths. So I, I can do production. I'm, I'm big on um, Adobe Audition. It's been my best friend in creating promos and, you know, all these other fun things. You know, when I'm in the studio, I'm just constantly in there for hours. Like, wait, it's six o'clock already? Like, I'll be in there all day and not realize just constantly playing around with things and playing with audio and stuff like that. So I feel like there's so many things I can do. And I think it's more of just me being at the right place at the right time, meeting the right person. They say that there are, are actors out there who don't get their first break till like 45 or 50. Hopefully it won't take me that long. <laughs> um, I'm willing to wait and willing to be patient. And there's a quote that always sticks out in my head because Disney's kind of like this, epic figure that I've looked up to. And he said, if you can dream it, you can do it. And I've pretty much done a lot, yeah. but I still feel like there's more to come for me and so more that I hope to achieve, you know, to be able to have this like DJ Sandra D empire, I think would be so awesome, you know, like to have, to be on the red carpet and then be able to do like a morning show and then be able to do something like that's see again, multiple hustles, you see. Well, because you, don't know. you just don't know. So Ryan Seacrest already mastered the game. He just hasn't told you that this entertainment business is so crazy that you need multiple hustles. Yeah. But he's indirectly to you because he's got so many jobs. So I feel like because of that, that's that's important for people. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Sandra, thank you so much for being on my show. Your uh -huh. first interview. So. I'm so excited. Thanks for having me. You were awesome. I loved your questions, especially the last one. That was very deep. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so hopefully everybody's watching this. Go subscribe to Sandra. Subscribe to my channel, you know, and uh, we'll be coming out with more info. So thank you again, and we'll talk to you all soon. Bye.